So what does that mean? How does it boil down, like in my day-to-day? -day? Okay, this is fine, I get it. Different kinds of articles, longer footnotes, fine. Different editorial process, different business, fine, fine, fine. How does it, how does it work? T show me. Very simple, very simple. Don't, don't, don't worry. What you do is you go to the databases, right? And you go to the business article databases, right? And you're going you're gonna to say, that's it? Ah, it's easy. So you go to Business Source Complete, for example. And here's the magic right there, peer review journal articles. That's it. All you have to do is click that. Well, I mean, you have to do a little bit more than that. But then you type in your subject, um, um, uh, emotional intelligence, of course, spelling helps. And then intrinsic motivation. And then off we go. And I have here scholarly peer review. Don't use the full text. Do, do not click this. This is bad. Don't click full text because we usually have the full text somewhere else. So don't don't click because I'll show you how to get the full text. Okay. So peer reviewed my topics and I hit search and there we go. This is I get three results. That's <laughs> not a lot. Um, so, but you know, actually this is actually a pretty good. I could probably use those. Now, notice here that number one and number two say find it at Concordia, and number three has the full text, okay? So what I could do is, uh, for the full text, I click, I download, I'm done, right? It's very simple. The ones that say find it at Concordia, all I have to do is click on the find it, and it tells me, oh, by the way, it's either in ProQuest or in Emerald. And then I click through again and off I go to the article itself. That's why you shouldn't use the full text option because we usually have the full text somewhere else, okay? And boom, there it is, okay? And that's my article. And I can download it right here from the PDF, okay? So in, in, the, in the lingo, in the library lingo, Business Source Complete and ProQuest Business Databases are what we call aggregators. They provide the listings of all of uh, a lot of journals, and then you have to click to another system to find the actual article because it's archived somewhere else. Okay, uh, don't worry about that. So you may say, okay, you know, three's not enough. Okay, I've looked at these articles. One of them's kind of okay, but the other two no. And I've looked at the bibliography, and it wasn't really that useful. So what can I do? Well, it's very, it's very simple. <laughs> you have two two subjects there. Take out one of them and see what happens. So if you take out one, then you get way too much. Look at that, 398, that's way too much. But here's a tip, right? In Business Source Complete, as in ProQuest Business Databases, as in most systems, you can look at the subject terms of the results that you've found. So if you click here on Show More, it actually points out the topics, the subject terms, the descriptors, the thesaurus terms, whatever you want to call them, that that have come up into this search. So employees and job satisfaction. So I can update that result set and then I get a different result set based on the keywords used in the system. Different systems, different keywords, happens all the time. Sometimes they match, sometimes there are slight variations. You have to watch out for that kind of stuff, okay? Um, and it, the other thing I could do is if I find something that's super interesting just say here one I can click on it and I usually get the subject terms here as well okay because articles tend to be on a much more precise topic you can have to uh, subject terms descriptors thesaurus terms whatever they're called that are a lot more precise so keep an eye out for those and what you may want to do is is keep a research log with each database and all the keywords that you find and that's just a good practice to do that because then you can get a picture of all the subject terms that are available in a field, okay? And by the way, I, I mentioned RefWorks earlier uh, in, in a different capsule. Well, here's how you do it. If you, go, uh, if you go back, you can add this to the folder right here. If you like it, you add it to your folder, to your basket, to your shopping cart, whatever you want to call it. You can go back to re the result list, and then you could put a few of these guys in, in your folder right add to folder and at the very top of the page and they there are different spots these things like folders and baskets and whatever shopping carts and different parts of the interface but you can usually figure it out uh, you have here your folder basket shopping cart here at the top and then here you get the subset of articles that you've selected and then you can export 
to whatever format you want. We use RefWorks, but if you have Zotero, that's possible. We support RefWorks. That's just the tool that we have. You can use EndNote. You can use any of these bibliographic management tools, uh, but we like RefWorks. That's what the one we offer, okay? So when I do that, I say save. It's gonna tell me to log into RefWorks. I log in with my account and boom, my information has been added to my RefWorks account automatically. Okay, so that's the that's the full cycle. Of course, you have to read the articles, you have to take notes, you have to think about the issue, you have to determine if what you have found fits with what you had in mind for your paper, and maybe you redevise your 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 search strategies. Maybe go back to encyclopedias and re review if you're using the right words. But you get the idea, right? Uh, and then. How many articles should you get? How many peer-reviewed research articles? Well, you know, it depends how long your paper is, what kind of course you have. You know, it, it's, just, it's just tough, tough to say. A good yardstick is between half an article and two articles per page. So if you're doing a 10-pager, between five to 20 articles. There is such a thing as too many articles. I mean, you just don't want to deluge your people, you want to, your readers, you want to make sure you're on a kind of on a set topic. So that's just kind of a yardstick. Yeah, you can have uh, newspaper articles, by the way. You can have magazine articles, but take it more as anecdotal evidence, as illustrations, as things to kind of supplement the research components of your paper. Okay, so research articles, scholarly articles, peer-reviewed articles from these journals are important to have. And by the way, I've been talking about a topical search in books and encyclopedias, uh, in encyclopedias, books, and, and articles. But really, you can also do industrial research in articles. For example, notice here that you can get an industry profile or a country report, right? So if I click this here, and I, ta and I say also maybe a trade publication, that's a good idea, and I say organic pet, Food, organic pet food, but then I'll only get results from, uh, see here, publication type, trade publication, industry profile, country report, and that's really cool, right? So brand packaging is a trade journal that covers brand packaging. Only that, every time it's published, there's only, articles are short, they're targeted to people in the industry, but if you wanna become a marketer, you could probably uh, subscribe to this, and actually, if you're interested in that journal specifically, notice how this is an hyper hyperlink, the source, the, the name of this magazine, this trade publication. If you click on that, this is the, the, the page for brand packaging, okay? You could uh, have an alert set up, right? Every t set up an RSS feed to this specific publication, it, should you be interested. Right? If you're a marketing major and you want to know about brands, well, every time there's a new issue, you're going to get an RSS feed alert or an email alert saying, hey, by the way, the new issue for brand packaging is out. You may want to check it out. This is just to let you know, okay? You can also search within this publication for information about brand packaging, right? So those are different options that are available to you through this interface, and ProQuest behaves in the same way. It's just, it's just a different company but with the same type of, of, of access to all these um, articles but in, in a different way it's just the same but in a different way uh, so that's that's some cool stuff here right uh, let's see so you can do in here you could type in uh, your uh, industry name especially the ones from the North American industry classification system. You could type in your trade association name to get articles about the trade association. Uh, you can type in the names of market leaders uh, and you can put a subject term in here to get, to get that. And if you get too many results and you're not satisfied, use the publication type feature here, right? And get you know industry profiles or country reports or SWOT analyses and that kind of stuff, right? So this is Business Source Complete by EBSCO. It has more research. If you want to have more Canadian stuff, uh, you can use ProQuest. 